divide it into four. If you don't know something, ask the people of knowledge. He took yours. You put your name on it. All right. Uh, أيوة أحسنت ده أبو عبيدة عامر ابن عبد الله الجراح was the reason for that revelation when he killed his own father. بارك الله فيك. Be kind to your neighbors. الحمد لله. I've seen him sometime helping their neighbors. Them, ما شاء الله. MashaAllah, if you respect your parents, then you should respect everyone else that are the age of your parents. If you respect me, alhamdulillah, make sure you respect everybody that is my age and older or younger. Hayakallah. These are... Very good. If a, if a Christian is nice to you, it's permissible to be nice to him. Okay, my question is to you. If a Christian, you go into the masjid for Jummah, Right? The Christians see you going, say, hey, where are you going? Oh, I'm going to the masjid. Oh, I'm a, I'll take you. Alhamdulillah, he takes you to the masjid, bring you to the masjid. Right? Okay. Sunday, his, his car broke down. He's walking to church. You pass by him, hey, Johnny, where are you going? Say, I'm going to church. Careful dollar. Right? What you going to do? Oh, come on in, Johnny. I'm going to take you. Give you a curbside service. Uh, what you going to do? What you going to do? Who oh, say so you no? Defend yourself. You aiding. This is something about the dean. Remember, the, sta the statement was what? As long as it doesn't touch nothing about the deen. He did you a favor to take you to the masjid, but it's not for you to give him a favor to take him to, to church. Because you're helping him in saying that Isa is Allah. Would you help him to do that? Then you can take him to church. Right. No, no, not the hell. Okay, yeah, meaning if you buying something that is permissible. Let's say you go to, you want to buy, uh, what you call it? Gum. You want to buy, you want to buy gum, uh, mint, mint, right? Chewing, chewing gum. gum, for instance, right? You want to buy chewing gum, for instance. There is two stores. One here is owned by a Muslim. The other one is owned by a kafir. But both of them selling alcohol. In that sense, you go to the Kuda Cafe and buy your gum, your chewing gum. To, huh? No, the Ahmadiyya, they go far, straight up. <laughs> no, you don't, you, don't, you don't pray behind them. No, you pray with them. You don't let them lead the Salah. No, you lead the Salah with them. That's, I'm, I'm saying, you don't, you don't let them lead the prayer, nor you lead the prayer with them. Meaning, in other words, don't pray with them. If this is, a, if you, if this is known of a masjid that is Ahmadiyya, فَلَا يَجُوزُ لَكَ الصَّلَافِي It's not for you to go there and pray. If this crowd is Ahmadiyya and they are praying, listen, go to another corner and pray by yourself. Even say, oh, Abdullah, oh, Muhammad, come lead the prayer. La. Okay, don't worry. We're going to pray behind you. Tell them, no, you go pray yourself. Because we have two different deen in here. We got an Islam and an Ahmadiyya. Right? Wa sallallahu wa sallam. Na Ahmad. The beard. He said, is the lihya, is the lihya a sunnah or is it mandatory? 
الحمد لله إمام مالك رحمه الله رحمة واسعة right he said cutting the beard is like mutilating oneself that's number one number two that cutting the beard and say that it is resembling the woman now when you come to the ruling barakallahu fikum as there is alhamdulillah a, a, um, a, a small book that is that is i think we still have it about the beard and at the end of it it gives some type of a, a letter that alhamdulillah the, the masjid or the administration can sign so you can take it to work or what not to just show them that this is something that is a religious matter Allah tabaraka wa ta'ala command us whatever the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam gave us that we take it that's number one, right Allah commanded us that whatever the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam gave us take it take it to take it right whatever the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam gave us to take it another verse where Allah tabaraka wa ta'ala command us to obey him and obey the messenger sallallahu alaihi wasallam to obey him and obey the messenger sallallahu alaihi wasallam there are more than 29 ahadith all of them saying this ahful liha in arabic there is what is called a fi'lu amr commanding verb it's just like let's say if you were my boss at work you tell me hey go mop the floor is it what do i have an option very good why because it is a command you gave me it's an order you gave me likewise in the wording in the wording of all of those ahadith it is in a commanding form in a commanding verb form another one where the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam say khalifu al yahud wa nasara differ from be different from the yahud and the nasara he say that the yahud they will leave their mustache and their beard as the christians they cut their beard and they leave their mustache so as us differing with them we will leave the beard and we will trim the mustache that's number one another issue to show you that all of the prophets all of the anbiya all of the anbiya they had beards they had beards all of them you remember what Musa alayhi salat what Harun said to Musa alayhi salatu wasalam right he told him what yabna ummi or you the son of my mother la ta'khudh do not hold me bi lihyati by my beard that is a proof of what that Musa alayhi salatu wasalam had a beard and even even what they quote and quote describe as Isa alayhi salatu wasalam them i'm saying them how they describe Isa alayhi salatu wasalam you find that they describe him with what a beard so the beard is walhamdulillah mandatory in the sense of the ruling yes it is the sunnah in the sense that the prophet alayhi salatu wasalam used to have it you understand in the ruling it is mandatory now as in regard to the prophet naam he used to have the beard now that is what you can say it is the sunnah why because the prophet used to have it just like alhamdulillah you have the sunnah what is called the sunnah of the actions the sunnah of the statements the sunnah of the approval and you have some other scholar that added a fourth sunnah which is the sunnah of the appearance the sunnah of how the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam physically physically how he was how he physically was so how he physically was was what that he used to have the beard and all the companions of the prophet alayhi salatu wasallam there is no report that so and so used to cut his beard clean shave none of them so this is indeed an obligation based on the ruling why because how the wording came which is in a commanding verb which is in a commanding verb 
if a person cut his beard and he persists upon that, his testimony is rejected. If a person cut his beard and is persistent upon that, his testimony is rejected. He cannot be a witness in the sense of Islam. Why? Because al istim al istimrar, right? Bisagair, yani being constantly upon the sins or the uh, yani even it is the, the the minor sins, this remove the adala from the person. This remove the adala from the person. And as I give you earlier, the statement Imam Mali rahimahullah he say, cutting the beard it is just like a man is taking one of his body parts and cutting it. Mutilating himself, and I know that none of us men will take uh, sharp scissors and pair of scissors and cut their nose or their or their ear lobes. I don't think none of us would do it. So look how he assimilated the beard to be a body part, a body part. Now that's his very serious barakallahi. Another issue is at the time of the salaf, they would not look at the man that was clean shaved. They will not, they, the same way they will lower their gaze in front of a woman, that's the same way they will lower their gaze in front of a man that it was a clean shave. Why? Because they perceive him as a woman. The Salaf was very stern in regard to the beard, Barakallah. May Allah Ta'ala give us good in this life and in the, in the hereafter and make us among those who will see him. على محمد وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين.